I'm making a movie trailer about a trombone player who transforms his instrument into a sniper rifle and becomes a hired hitman. And I'm going to bring you on the journey with me. The shooting happened shortly after 9 o'clock last night, but it's still very much an active crime scene in this neighborhood. Investigators are trying to figure out if this was any way linked to We should tell you police are still trying to notify the families of some of the victims, so we can't tell you all of their names. Here's what we do know about so guess what I found out? That in film and TV, audio quality is believed to be more important than video quality. Meaning that I am more likely to watch a film or a TV show with less than stellar video quality as long as the audio is excellent than I am to continue to watch something with amazing video quality but terrible audio. So it turns out sound is even more important than I had fully realized when I started thinking about doing the Trombone Assassin trailer. It's a really big deal. So we're gonna talk about live audio, recording live audio for film or for a video. The first piece of gear that I've picked up here is the Zoom F3. This is essentially a live audio recorder. It is um, a two channel or two track recorder so you could record um, up to two inputs at a time. I could have two totally different microphones recording on these different channels. It's pretty much plug and play. There, there's not a lot of options on it. It does provide phantom power for uh, microphones that need it. Um, it's really, really simple, which is the best thing about it. It's extremely rugged. I feel like I could shoot this and it probably would just bounce right off. Um, don't try shooting your Zoom F3. I, I won't either. I don't own a gun, so we're good. This is designed to capture live audio and the magic that it offers is 32-bit float point audio recording. And I want you to know that, um, so this is recording the sound live, I did an entire take of this whole video and had not <laughs> turned it on, which is crazy, uh, but uh, you've, had to, you've got to remember these things. You, every, every little thing has a step that you have to do, and I forgot the step of turning on the audio recorder. 32-bit float point audio essentially allows you to avoid the worst thing that can happen to you in recording live audio, and that is clipping. Not that kind of clipping, but audio clipping, which is where your sound input, your audio input, whatever is creating the sound that you're recording, uh, the level goes beyond what your digital converters can handle, and when it's trying to create these audio waveforms, it begins to distort the waveform and the sound, and the sound uh, gets bad, it gets ugly, it gets, sounds distorted, and it's essentially, you can't fix it. There's no coming back from clipped audio. Uh, All right, thumbs up. Ready, guys, Let's or... do this. Leroy Dragons! What this new audio recording technology does is allow you to record such a wide range of decibel levels that you basically cannot clip. It, the, the range is absolutely massive. I could scream into the microphone, which is right up here, I keep looking up here. I could scream into the microphone and you could still save that audio sound, it's not gonna clip. Which is incredible for filming anything where you have live audio and an unpredictable audio level. So this Zoom F3 is a life-changing, game-saving, uh, no, that's not, Life saving, game changing. I'm just, I'm just gonna mix metaphors here. It's the cream of the best. It's going to make it so much easier to properly record audio without fear. If you're not using this kind of technology, you have to make sure your levels are lined up, that, that somebody's, that whatever sounds you're gonna make in the recording are approximately the level that you're gonna get, and then cross your fingers that nobody gets louder than that. You wanna get the audio recording as loud as possible without clipping, and this, you know, is it a miracle? Does it have any uh, limitations? Sure, probably not a miracle, has limitations, 
but it's pretty amazing. The other thing that matters in recording live sound for film is you need to get the microphone as close to the subject, as close to whatever's making the sound as possible. Obviously, you don't want the microphone in the frame. You don't want to see the mic, um, but you need to be able to get it very, very close. And that means if I'm carrying this guy around and I have it, say, attached to whoever's doing the sound recording, the sound recordist, uh, and they've got a, a boom pole and the microphone's attached to that, they're kind of mobile. They can go wherever they need. Um, now let's talk about the microphone that we got. I picked up the venerable Sennheiser MKH416. Let no, I'm not going to do that. You knew what I was going to do, but I won't do it. Sorry. This microphone is industry standard. It has been used to record sound for so many films, so many TV shows, and there's a reason. I'm not a microphone specialist, but I have studied it. I have watched a lot of videos. I have seen all the comparisons. Is it the greatest microphone ever made? No. Are there much more expensive microphones that are probably even better? Yeah. But is it up there in the upper echelons of good? Yeah. It's an amazing mic. In fact, I have a $300 uh, boom microphone that I've been using up until now, and I don't even remember the brand off the top of my head, and I thought it was fine. But when I started using the Sennheiser, I was stunned at the difference. It, it really is such a good microphone. So I still need to pick up a blimp and you're not gonna believe this, a dead cat. It's <laughs> that fuzzy thing they put you put on the microphones uh, to reduce wind noise. It's actually called a dead cat. There's there's other like more appropriate terms for it, but I just dead cat's amazing. That's what we're going with here. So I've got to pick those up. They're actually surprisingly expensive. Like a decent dead cat is a is a lot of money, and uh, those blimps uh, that have technology built in to reduce the amount of. Um, sound that travels between the boom pole and the microphone, they're pretty pricey. So we're gonna hold off for now, but that's uh, coming down the line for when we start shooting the trombone assassin and uh, when we're doing some of the uh, exterior scenes to help reduce uh, outside noise. The other cool thing about this microphone is it rejects what's called off-axis sound. So it really, uh, it's a shotgun mic, so it's really designed to pick up whatever it's aiming at and reject as much off-axis sound as possible. That helps reduce uh, the random sounds that you don't want to get into your scene, like street noises and uh, whatever else is going on in the background. Now, because we're gonna be recording the sound and the video on two completely different devices, we actually need a way to sync up the sound. Uh, professionally, they use something called time code, uh, where it, there's a master clock that tells all the devices um, where we are on, on the time so they can sync them up automatically. But before the use of time code, and I'm not going to be able to use time code for a number of reasons, but before the use of time code, uh, they used to use the clapper board, the clapper, the slate, the sticks. Mark. So, the slate or clapper board is, has a bunch of different purposes and I won't go into all of them, but uh, one of them is to show the editor what scene and take, this is for rolls of film, we're not gonna be using rolls of film here, uh, et cetera, so that it's easier for editing. But this part is actually designed to create a sound that you can line up with this happening the two um, components smacking each other so that you can know where the audio starts in your recorded audio and line it up with the video. I actually didn't know that, and now I know. And knowing is, no, I won't do that either. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that my camera will also record audio. It's not a great microphone, so I'll use it as essentially scratch audio, but I can use the audio recorded by the camera and line it up with the Zoom F3's audio. I can both listen and look at the waveforms uh, in uh, DaVinci Resolve, where we're doing the editing, and line those up. So there's different ways to do it, but that's how we're going to get the audio to sync up properly with the video. So let's briefly talk about cost. The um, Zoom F3 is about $350. Um, and so 
It's a lot of money, but uh, not anywhere near as expensive as the Sennheiser MKH416, which is the microphone. And that is a $1,000 microphone, which admittedly is insane. I mean, it's that's so much money, especially for a fun uh, project. But with how seriously I wanna take this, I really wanted to get very, very high quality audio. And I have already noticed a difference between the $300 microphone I have been using and the Sennheiser. It is uh, significantly better on the Sennheiser. So um, we still have some more expenditures to do on audio. We're getting relatively close to done there. Probably another $500 to spend there to get everything we need to get uh, live audio going. So we're moving in that direction and uh, looking forward to showing you more of uh, where we're going with all this. Thanks for watching.